Yo, what is up guys and welcome back to another episode of Slice of Shonen. I am your host, The Cloudy Crow, and today we'll be reacting to Oshinoko Season 2, Episode 7. And in the last episode, my boy Melt gave us the performance of a lifetime. Now, people have been giving him trash for his performance in Sweet Today, online and offline. We had people confronting him, talking about how he's not a good actor, making him feel like everything that he's gotten throughout his life has just been kind of handed to him because he's a good looking guy and he's never really had to work for anything so now he's finally put the work in and he has done the impossible he's done something that very few actors have ever been able to do which is that for a brief moment he was able to make a side character look like the main character so that was absolutely fire to watch but before we actually get into the episode two real quick announcements first one is going to be that sponsored anime are back on the channel so if there's any anime out there that you would like to see me react to then you can do that through sponsored anime if you check out yesterday's video the ultimate anime list video there i explain how sponsored Sponsored anime works or if you would like to just contact me through my business email which you can find on my YouTube discord patreon Twitter however you want to contact me I can explain how sponsorships work there as well and the second big announcement people have recently been coming up to me talking about how they've just now stumbled into anime that I've reacted to a long long time ago and they had no idea that I reacted to those series so I decided to create an entire compiled list of all of the anime I've ever reacted to. So if you are a fan of the channel, if you've been enjoying the reactions, make sure to check out that list and see if I've reacted to any of your personal favorite anime in the past. There are over a hundred plus anime reactions on that list, so make sure to go check it out. But with that all out of the way, make sure to like, hit that subscribe button, bell notification so you know whenever I drop a brand new reaction. And without any further ado, let's get into this episode. Oh my god. I love- I'm sorry, I gotta pause because it just caught me so off guard. I love how they had her come in in complete silence. There was no music in the background, no nothing. Just like, you feel like you're at the actual play, dude. I can't stress that enough. Oh, and this is them confronting him. Right after his fight. Talk to him. Mm-hmm. You gotta catch up, buddy. Who's looking like the amateur now? She didn't come here to play. She came here strictly for business. Chicken with tartar sauce. We need to make her an actual character in this series, dude. I like this side of Kana. Let's see what she has to say. Dang! Holy! <laughs> this part changed the most. So she has to try to convey that same level of emotion in even fewer words. That's my guess, at least, of what's going on here. Why everybody's so tense. There we go. There we go. Mm -hmm. I love how we can always tell whether they killed it or not just by looking at Abiko. <laughs> Alright! 
Oh, they look sick! What the heck? She looks awesome, bro! Oh my god! Alright, you gotta keep it pushing. There we go. That's what I'm talking about, Mel. Get your get back. This music! I'm feeling it, man. Alright. The face off. He looks so different without his glasses, man. She's about to be face to face with the princess. Dang, we might be getting to it sooner than I thought. Ooh, what? Bro. <laughs> Akane's aura is immaculate, bro. Every scene she's in, it feels like you're stumbling into the final boss. Talk to her. I'm rooting for Akane. <laughs> oh, backstory time. For revenge? <laughs> My guess is maybe she might have stumbled into Kana and Kana must have said something that broke her heart. Dang. <laughs> Bro, the bell peppers, man. She's never gonna live that down. We know Akane was really grinding out here. Look, eating your vegetables too? Thanks, Kana. <laughs> Teaching kids to eat their bell peppers. Whoa. There it is! And look, she's really studying. Did she even cut her hair to be like her? Dang! She really looked up to Kana, man. What happened? Great. Looks like today's gotta be a big day for her. Hmm. Yeah, I was about to say, what? How did, it's obviously not her, what? Oh no. We know how Kana was like when she was a kid, though. See what's going on here. Okay. Interesting. So uh, going into this, when she first walked out of the elevator, I don't know, for some reason I thought this was like a, a fan meetup or some sort of... I don't know. I didn't think it was serious other than the fact that Kana was going to be here and she'd be able to meet Kana. But I guess I see now that both of them came here to audition for a role and she's finding out that Kana's already solidified for that role, even though the auditions haven't started yet. So Akane is kind of just stunned at the fact that, like, she didn't even get a chance. 
You can tell. You can tell, man. She doesn't, but she feels like she has to accept it. Oh my gosh, this is so deep, man, because I think we all know what's going on here. I think we all know what's going on here. Right now, Kana is in the middle of her, like, child actress struggles that she went through, that she mentioned a lot in season one, and now she's basically just roped into the situation that she's, she's understood the reality of the acting industry, and although she doesn't like it, she has to accept it, and I think the reason why she kind of vented all of her frustrations out on Akane back there is because Akane reminded her of her past self, and so I'm guessing the reason she said all these things, like, I hate people like you the most, that was, like, her projecting, you know? Dang, man, that's... It's so interesting, because I can easily see how this would like make Akane see Kana some type of way and kind of hold this grudge against her. But at the same time, since we know the context, since we know what Kana was actually dealing with, it's like, I can't even be mad at her, bro. She was really going through it as a kid. So it's like, this wasn't even, in my opinion, uh, a instance of her like doing Akane wrong, really. It's just that Kane caught her at a bad time. Somebody help her! Oh, dang, never mind. She doesn't need help anymore. Psychology. Yeah, so she's been studying this whole time to try to understand. Dang. Mm. So that they wouldn't kick you to the curb. Yeah, now she's a part of B Komachi. Oh, this music. Wow, so she's changed. That's how Akane feels. You're not who you used to be. Egotistical, stylish, and amazing. Dang. Wow! Wait, that's interesting. That almost slid past me. How she said before, you were trying to match your steps with everyone else around you. But, like, originally, you shined most when you made others have to keep up with your pace. Dang! Hold on! Hold on! I fight to stand out the most. Oh my god! Okay! We haven't heard Kana's side of this story yet, though. This girl is the star. But it's not too late to turn it around, Kana! Dang, I don't know who to root for it, man! <laughs> Dang. 
This anime really is beautiful, man. Whew. Man. Dang. Yep, there we go. It's time, Kana. Oh, now her past is coming back to haunt her. And look, she can see it. The light in her eyes has gone out. This isn't what Akane wants, though. She wants a worthy opponent. And I'm sure it's also pretty heartbreaking to see that how far your idol has fallen. Yeah, I know how she's feeling. She wanted to win, but not like this. Aqua? Mm -hmm. She wants to outshine her when she's at her best. Mm -hmm. Dude, everybody knows this feeling, man. Like, what the heck? You train for months to win a boxing match and then your opponent gets disqualified. It's like, bro! I was trying to take down the reigning champ, what do you mean? Dang, man. But it's not over yet. It's not over yet. That was, what, the end of Act 2? So I'm sure things are only just getting started here. And there's still a chance for Kana to bounce back. She just needs to break out of this mental block. Just like, um, Aqua. But he hasn't gotten to his point yet. Dang, man. Alright, so that was the end of the episode, and my question of the day for you guys is going to be, what are you guys' thoughts on why, or why Kana treated Akane the way that she did back when they were kids, and she, like, smacked the hat off of her and stuff? I want to hear you guys' interpretation, because I already gave my thoughts, but maybe you guys have seen or noticed some things that I didn't, so let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And with that, I am going to head out. Thank you all so much for watching this far into the video. And I will catch you all in the next one. Have a good one.